I'm Maddie, and today I'm looking in the garden for two cats. Have you seen them anywhere? They're not under the tree, and they're not on their favourite spot on the fence. I know how we can find them. I wonder if they're hungry. Cats make great pets, don't they? The cats like to be outside in the garden, hiding and exploring, but there is something else they like. Lunch. What's this, ready, steady Paul? What's that? This is Madison, and this is Malika. And there's something really clever that means the cats can come in and out of the house whenever they like. Do you know what it is? That's right, it's a cat flap. It's like a little door just for cats. But do you know how a cat flap works? Let's find out. How does it work? A cat flap. To show you how a cat flap works, let's see if we can get Madison and Malika to use it. They like to sneak in and out throughout the day. So I'm going to set up two special cameras. One on the inside and one outside. They like to come out to play after they've had their lunch. Watch what happens. Our cameras are all set up. Oh look, here's Madison. Is she going to get through? Yes, she's in. Whoa, that was fast, wasn't it? I tell you what, let's watch it again, this time in slow motion. Watch how Madison pushes it open with her nose. Did you hear the sound that the cat flap made when the door opened and closed? Listen again. It sounds like a click, doesn't it? The cat flap opens like that for Madison and Malika, but look what happens if I try to open it. Does it work? No. Why do you think that is? That's because this cat flap will only work for Madison and Malika. But how does the cat flap know who they are? It's because of this. It's called a microchip and this, a sensor on the cat flap. Let's see how it works. Both Madison and Malika had a microchip put underneath their fur by the vet. It didn't hurt them and it's very small, so they can't feel it at all. Their microchips have the same special number on them. This number is also on the sensor inside the cat flap, so they match. When one of the cats goes up to their cat flap, the sensor inside scans the microchip by their neck, just like how we scan our shopping at the supermarket checkout. When it sees there is a match, a small lock inside the cat flap is unlocked. So when they push the flap with their head, the flap swings open to let them through. The same happens when they want to come home. But the cat flap only opens for Madison and Malika. If any other cats come along, they can't get in because they don't have the same matching number. The microchip is tiny. It's only a bit bigger than a grain of rice. In fact, it's so small, I've got a special camera with me, a microscope, which will let us see it in close up. Oh, look at that. Isn't it incredible that something so tiny can open and close a cat flap? To show you what the microchip looks like inside a cat, I have a special photo called an X-ray. An X-ray is a special picture that lets us see what we look like under our skin. And this is an X-ray of a cat. Look, you can see under the cat's skin. Look at all of its bones. And can you see that white blob there? That is the microchip. It's tiny, isn't it? Madison and Malika love their cat flap. They're in and out all day. What was your favourite bit about seeing how a cat flap worked? Do you remember what you call the special device that goes under Madison and Malika's fur and lets them in the cat flap? 
That's right, it's a microchip. Did you hear the sound the cat flap made when it opened? And did you see the x-rays showing the microchip in the cat's body? So next time you see a cat use a cat flap, you'll know just how it works. Oh, her fur is so lovely and soft. The fur helps keep the cat warm when it's outside, but we don't have fur, do we? So how do we stay warm? I like to wear a woolly hat. But do you know where wool comes from? How is a woolly hat made? Let's find out. How is it made? A woolly hat. Your woolly hat starts off in a place like this, a sheep farm. And that's because the wool that makes your woolly hat actually comes from a sheep's coat. And there are a lot of sheep here. Here we go. <laughs> This is Lewis and he's going to show us how you get wool from a sheep. The first thing Lewis does is to clip the woolly coat off the sheep and to do that he uses this. It's called a shear to do something called shearing. The sheep are sheared one by one. The sheep is held very still and Lewis snips away quickly so that all the woolly coat is cut off. A shear is a bit like a pair of scissors. Can you see? Lewis is using it to cut the wool off the sheep, but it doesn't hurt the sheep at all. It's just like having a haircut. Can you hear the sound of the shears? What does it sound like? I think it sounds just like a small engine. And this is what we're left with. The wool that comes off the sheep is called a fleece. The sheep will grow a new woolly coat, just like how you grow your hair back after you've had a haircut. But this fleece doesn't look much like a woolly hat, does it? To find out what happens next, I have to go somewhere else. This is a mill where they make all sorts of things from wool. I bought a fleece with me, so let's go and see what happens next. When the fleeces arrive at the mill, they are weighed and then sorted. Sue here is going through and sorting each fleece by hand. She's picking out any mucky bits that got onto the sheep whilst she was in the field. This fleece here has a bit of blue spray paint on it. That's from where the farmer has sprayed a number onto the sheep so he didn't lose it in the field. <laughs> washed, rinsed, and then the water is squeezed out by rollers. The wool is now clean. It just needs to be dried out in a tumble dryer. You might have one at home, but this is a lot bigger. After the fleece has had a really good wash, it's put into this machine. It's called a Fear Nought machine, and I think it looks a bit like a green dinosaur with big teeth. The teeth pull apart the fleece to get rid of any knots, a bit like when you brush your hair. On the next machine, the wool is fed through huge rollers, which are covered in smaller teeth. The teeth brush out the wool and also make sure that any last bits of hay or seeds from the field can be taken out. But everything's happening so fast. Let's use my special slow motion camera to slow everything down and get a better look. Look at the teeth brushing out the wool. Isn't it clever? This is what the wool looks like when it comes off the rollers. These are called Slubbings, which is my new favourite word. It's beginning to look like the wool you might make a hat with, but it's not ready yet because it breaks too easily. It's not strong enough. So first, it has to be 
fun. The wool is added to this big spinning frame, and as each piece is pulled out, it's twisted round and round. And at the other end, we get this. It's called yarn. The yarn is quite thin. To give it extra strength and make it thicker, four strands are twisted together. When the wool comes off the twisting machine, it looks like this. You can see how much stronger and thicker it is. This is called Clyde yarn, and it's what people used to knit with. Things like jumpers, scarves, or woolly hats. But not everything we wear is the same colour as a sheep. So what we need is a bit of colour. This is the part of the factory where the yarn can be turned into lots of different colours. And this stage is called dyeing. A blue liquid called dye is added to hot water to make it blue. Now the yarn is being dipped into the blue water where it's going to stay for three whole hours. Three hours later, the wool is ready to come out. <laughs> and when it's finished, it looks like that. What an amazing blue colour. Here is lots of wool that has already been turned into different colours and rolled into small balls. Now, I think it's time to make a woolly hat. But do you know what colour hat I usually wear? That's right, a red hat. So, we need some red wool. Paula is making me a woolly hat and she's doing something called knitting. You might know someone who knits and it's very clever and Paula's very fast at it. Here we are, a brand new bright red woolly hat. How do I look? What did you like most about seeing how a woolly hat was made? Do you remember what you call the wool when it's been taken off the sheep? That's right, it's called a fleece. Did you hear the sound of the sheep being sheared? And did you see the teeth brush out the wool on my slow motion camera? So the next time you wear a hat, scarf or woolly jumper, remember that it was made from yarn that came from a sheep's woolly coat. Thank you, sheep. <laughs> See you next time. There are lots of things all around us, exciting things that surround us. But how does it work? Do you Special cameras to show you inside. It's going to be a big surprise. But how does it work? Do you know? How is it made? Do you know? Do you know? Let's find out! Hello, I'm Maddie, and today I'm looking at transport and the different ways you can travel around. Oh, look, there's a boat. I love boats, do you? I like the way they glide about on top of the water. But do you know how a boat moves? How does it work? Let's find out. How does it work? A boat. Come on, we're going for a boat ride. If you 
around, you can see there are lots of different parts to a boat. That's the front, the pointy bit, and it's called the bow. And this is the back, it's called the stern. And then that is the engine. And in the middle, we have places to sit and put our things. At the bow, there is something called an anchor. Peter is lowering the anchor into the water down to the bottom of the lake, where it will hook into the ground and hold the boat in one place. But there are lots of parts of the boat you can't see. Do you know why that is? <laughs> it's because they're in the water. I know. Let's use my special camera and this underwater light to see if we can get a closer look. Now you can see underneath the boat and this is what makes it move. This is called a propeller. Here's a little toy boat. You might have one just like it to play with in the bath. And this one has propellers too. Can you see? The propeller looks a bit like a fan that goes round and round and cools you down, doesn't it? <laughs> but on a real boat, the propeller is powered by an engine and that's what makes the boat move. The engine and propeller are attached to each other. Petrol goes in the boat engine. And when it starts, it makes a big brum brum noise. Inside, the petrol starts to burn, and as it does, it creates a powerful gas. The gas pushes a long pole called a piston backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. As the piston moves, it turns a cog at the bottom, and this cog turns another cog attached to the propeller outside the boat. As the propeller spins round and round, it pushes the boat out the water. Let's go! Look at the propeller again. You can see the blade spinning around, pushing the water away behind it and sending the boat forwards. take a closer look at the propeller, we are using something called a winch to pull the boat in. <laughs> I'm just helping pulling the boat in. And doesn't the winch sound great? <laughs> Clickety click. <laughs> the propeller has three blades. One, two, Three. And it's these three blades that help push the boat through the water. Being on a boat is such great fun. But if you were on a boat, where would you like to go? Can you remember the name of the front of the boat? It's the pointy bit and it's called the bow. Did you hear the winch as it pulls the boat out of the water? It went clickety-click. And did you see the propeller spinning round and round? So next time you see a boat, you'll know just how it works. But there are lots of other ways to travel too. On the water, on the ground, in the sky. What things travel up in the sky? There are aeroplanes, helicopters, and my personal favourite, the hot air balloon. <laughs> this is just a toy hot air balloon. The real thing is much bigger. But do you know how a hot air balloon is made? <sighs> Let's find out. How is it made? balloons are really big. They have a basket for people to ride in and a huge balloon which lifts the basket high into the sky. And this is where they're made. Yes, this 
is a hot air balloon factory. And that is a lot of material. The material is called nylon and it arrives in the factory in big rolls. So how does all this become a balloon? First, the material needs to be cut into smaller pieces with a small round cutter. Here it is. It fits inside the machine, just here. Let's see it cut the material into smaller pieces using my special camera. With my special camera in place, it's time to turn the machine on. The cutter is programmed by a computer to cut the strips into the right size. It moves along really fast. It doesn't look like it's doing anything. But believe it or not, that is cutting the material into smaller pieces. It takes lots and lots of these strips of nylon to make a hot air balloon. But how are they joined together? That happens here, in the sewing room. The sewing machine joins at the edges with thread using a special stitch so the material won't tear. Listen to that sound. It's a bit like a jigsaw. All the pieces have to be sewn together in the right order so that you end up with a perfect looking balloon. Whilst the balloon is being sewn together, in a of the factory, the team are working on the basket. The basket is made from willow, which is a type of tree that is light and bends into shapes easily. Look how the wood has been woven. It's like a bigger version of a basket you might have at home. Like a bin. Or a fruit basket. Have you got a basket at home? But this basket is going to carry something much heavier than fruit. It's amazing to think that this will soon carry people high, high up into the sky. Back upstairs, one of the balloons is ready. But do you know how much material goes into making just one balloon? <laughs> wow, look how much material there is. It's like the biggest superhero cape ever. But to see just how much material there really is, let's fill it with air. Wow, it's enormous. It's so big it won't even fit inside this room. Big moment. Let's go inside. That is amazing! Let's go on and explore around the balloon with my special camera. <gasps> Look just how huge this balloon is! You can see how all of the pieces of material have been stitched together. There's actually a thousand metres of material here. If you stretched all of that out, it would be the same as 80 big buses in a row. So we have the balloon and we've got the basket. Now we just need to see it fly. The team are getting a hot air balloon ready to fly. material and lay it out flat. I'm so excited to see all of this flat material inflate. Next, the team are going to inflate the material with air using a fan so that it blows up. It's a bit like a party balloon. <sighs> Only a lot bigger. Where'd it go? Wow, this hot air balloon is enormous! This 
is the gas burner. It makes the air inside the balloon hot, which lifts it off the ground <laughs> and makes it fly. Look at that, a giant white balloon. What do you think it looks like? I think it looks a bit like a huge egg. Just look at this hot air balloon. Isn't it incredible how a flat piece of material can turn into this? I loved seeing how a hot air balloon was made. What was your favourite bit? Do you remember the name for the part of the hot air balloon that carries people? That's right, it's the basket. Did you like the sound of the sewing machine when it sewed all the material together? And did you see how big the balloon was when it filled up with hot air? It was huge! So now we know how a hot air balloon is made with lots of material, lots of sewing, and this bendy wood that's used to make the basket. And now we know how a boat works using a propeller under the water to push the water away. Right, there's only one thing left to do. Fly. Up, up and away! I'll see you next time. I'm Maddie, and today I'm visiting a hospital. Have you ever been to a hospital? They're very special places because inside there are lots of doctors and nurses who help people get better if they're poorly or hurt. Sometimes doctors use special machines to help people, and there's one machine you might have seen before. Let's go inside and have a look. We're in a consulting room where you see a doctor, and this is the machine. It's called a blood pressure monitor. Your heart pumps blood all around your body, to your head, to your fingers and toes. And doctors and nurses use blood pressure monitors to check that your blood is flowing nicely through your body. It's called checking your blood pressure. Do you know how a blood pressure monitor works? Let's find out. How does it work? A blood pressure monitor. This is Amanda and she's going to check my blood pressure. Blood pressure shows how easily blood passes through your blood vessels. And to measure it, she's going to use the blood pressure monitor. The first thing that Amanda is doing, she's putting this bit, is called the cuff around the top of my arm. Now Amanda is pressing a button which makes air travel from the machine through this tube and into the cuff. The cuff is blowing up. It's a little bit like blowing up armbands when you go to the swimming pool. Did you hear that sound? That buzzing sound was the machine working and inflating the cuff. I can feel the cuff getting tighter and tighter. It's a bit like having your arms squeezed, but it doesn't hurt. When it's ready, we'll hear a little beep and that will tell Amanda it's ready so she can check my blood pressure. And that was the beeping sound.
If you look at the monitor, you can see there are two numbers and those numbers will tell Amanda if my blood pressure is okay. Amanda, how's my blood pressure? It's fine today, Maddie. Thank you. So my blood pressure is nice and healthy. But how does the cuff tightening around my arm tell the machine and Amanda that my blood pressure is okay? Well, to find out, we need to see what's going on inside my body when my blood pressure is being taken. Your heart pumps blood all around your body. With each heartbeat, it pumps blood through lots of little tubes called blood vessels. Having good blood pressure means your blood is flowing nice and easily around your body. It's not going too fast or too slow. When your blood pressure is checked, the cuff on the monitor fills with air and it gets bigger and bigger. The bigger it grows, the tighter it gets on your arm. This squeezes the blood vessels so the machine can measure how easily the blood is travelling through. The doctor can tell what your blood pressure is by the numbers shown on the machine. If you've ever had your blood pressure taken, then you know it feels a bit funny when it tightens around your arm, but it doesn't hurt. But do you know what blood vessels look like? Well, I don't have a special camera with me today. Instead, I have a very special light and it shows you what's happening under your skin. But first, we need to dim the lights and turn it on. Wow, that's amazing. It looks like there are lots of branches of trees inside my arms or the veins that you see on a leaf. But what you're actually seeing are my blood vessels. This special light uses a laser to show you your blood vessels under your skin. And there are so many in my arm. Look at my hand. My hand is full of blood vessels. I can follow these blood vessels and veins from my hand all the way up my arm, even to my elbow. Can you see those dark patches? That's the blood flowing freely around my body. That is incredible. How amazing to be able to see under your skin using a special light. I loved being able to see under my skin and learning how a blood pressure monitor works. What was your favourite bit? Do you remember what you call the part of the blood pressure monitor which goes around your arm? That's right, it's called the cuff. Did you hear the sound the monitor made when the cuff was blowing up with air like a balloon? Did you see the blood vessels in my arm when I used my special light? Wow, that's amazing. It looks like there are lots of branches of trees inside my arms or the veins that you see on a leaf. So if you ever need to have your blood pressure checked or see someone having theirs taken, you'll know how the monitor works and what your veins look like inside your body. There are lots of reasons why people might come to a hospital and one of them is if they break a bone. I broke my arm when I was younger. Have you ever broken an arm or a leg or a finger? Whatever you break, there are special doctors and nurses in hospitals who help fix broken bones. And there's something they use to put on a broken bone to help fix it. Can you guess what it is? That's right, it's a cast. This is a cast for an arm. But do you know how it's made? Let's find out. How is it made? A cast. When a bone is broken, a special photograph is taken called an X-ray and it shows the doctor what the bone looks like inside a body. An X-ray looks like this. This is an X-ray of an arm and can you see that the bone here is broken? To fix it, the bone needs to be held still for a few weeks so it can be made straight again. And here 
After it's been put in a cast, you can see that the bone is now straight and it's healed. But I want to see how a cast is made, so I've come here. This is the plaster room, where plaster is put on broken bones to help them get better. You can get different types of casts. A plaster cast, which is made from bandages covered in a special type of clay. Or fibreglass, which is a special bandage made from woven glass straps. This is Sean, and he's going to be putting a fibreglass cast on my arm. Now, I haven't broken my arm, but we've been given special permission for Sean to put a cast on me so we can show you how it's made. First, Sean is putting a nice soft layer around my arm and it looks like a big long sock. There's even a little sock for my thumb. Next, Sean is wrapping my arm in padding. This will make the bandage really comfortable. It's lovely and soft. Now it's time for the bandage, and there are lots of different colours you can choose from. I've gone with blue. First, Sean has dipped the bandage in water, and that's made it easy to work with. And it's sticky, so it sticks to itself as it's being wrapped around my arm. <gasps> it does feel really warm. It's a lovely, cosy, snuggly feeling. And the bandage sets really quickly. That means it goes hard. And that's what will protect my bone and help it to get better. Oh, that's so, such a strange feeling. Sean smooths the cast out and then he's finished. My arm feels really protected and safe. I love the colour too. You can have all sorts of colours. Red, green, how about pink? What's your favourite colour? I think I'll stick with blue. Now the bandage is on my arm, we need to wait for it to dry and set so it goes hard. Let's use my special camera to take a closer look. This is a microscope and it lets us see really small things in close detail. Wow! Look at the bandage. Can you see all the fibreglass strands looping through the material of the bandage? That is amazing. It looks like blue rope covered in glue, doesn't it? What do you think it looks like? This is going to set, it will become really hard and this will protect my arm. That is brilliant. Time to see if my cast is set. Listen to the sound it makes when I tap it. It sounds like knocking on a door. Now the cast is dry and hard, so if there was a broken bone inside here, my arm would be kept still and safe, so it could heal and get better. But now it's dry, there's something really fun we can do to it. We can draw on it with sparkles. There we go, a sparkly heart. You could have all sorts of pictures on a cast. What picture would you like to draw? Now, usually it takes a couple of weeks for a broken bone to get better, but luckily I don't have a broken arm. So Sean's going to take the cast off for me. Well, my cast is off and my arm is back to normal. What was your favourite bit about seeing how a cast was made? Do you remember what colour my cast was? That's right, it was blue. But you can get all sorts of colours. Which colour would you choose? Did you hear the sound the cast made when I tapped it? It sounded like knocking on a door. And did you see what the fibreglass cast looked like when I filmed it with my special camera? It looks like blue rope covered in glue, doesn't it? That is brilliant. So 
the next time you see someone with a fiberglass cast or you have one yourself, you'll know just how they're made. And now you know how a blood pressure monitor works and how it helps the doctors and nurses check that the blood is flowing nicely around your body. I'll see you next time. I'm Maddie and it's bath time and I'm just about to run a bath. Let's pop the plug in and turn on the tap. I love bath time, do you? What do you like most about it? Is it the rubber ducks or the bubbles? I love a bubble bath so I'm going to pour in a nice big dollop of bath foam. Remember, you must always get a grown-up to run your bath. Listen to the sound. Swish, swish, swish. <laughs> and now, we have lots of lovely bubbles. <laughs> what else do you like about bath time? I like that the water is nice and warm. But do you know? where the water comes from. How does it get into the taps and how does your bath water get warm? How does hot water work? Let's go and find out. How does it work? Hot water! Your bath water starts its journey here. In a reservoir. A reservoir is a big lake that's used to store water. The water collected here will come from rivers and streams and also the rain. All the water that is collected here in the reservoir is clean so that it's safe. And then it's sent through pipes to our houses. There are lots of pipes under the roads and pavements where you live. And some of these big pipes carry water all the way from the reservoir into your house. In your bathroom at home, you might have a sink and a tap just like this one. And to get water, all you need to do is turn the tap on. Amazing, isn't it? But the water that comes from the reservoir is cold. So how does it get hot? To make the water hot, we need one of these, a boiler. There are lots of different types of boiler and you might have one in your house. Let's find out how this one makes the water hot. The water from a reservoir goes through a building to be cleaned. It's then sent by pipes to our homes. One of the ways cold water is heated in your house is by a boiler. Inside the boiler is a small tank. The water gets heated there by a row of flames or electricity. When it's hot, the water is sent out through another pipe to a much bigger tank. This big tank is called a cylinder. Inside it, there is a big heated coil which keeps all the water warm until you want to use it. When you turn the hot water tap on, it lets water from the cylinder tank travel along the pipe, into the tap and out into your bathtub. It's lovely and warm. But remember, it's important that a grown-up always checks how hot the water is before you get in the bath. To see how hot the bath water is, I've got a special camera. This is called a thermal camera, and it tells us what's hot and what's cold by showing us different colours. Oh, hello everyone. What colours can you see? Blue things are cold and red things 
are warm. So look, can you see just how red my face is? And that's because the inside of my body is warm. What about the inside of my mouth? Whoa! <sighs> it's so hot that it's white. Let's have a look down at the floor, shall we? My feet are bright red because my feet are warm. Apart from my toes. My toes are freezing. <laughs> But if cold things are blue and hot things are red, do you know what colour the bath will be? <gasps> Whoa, look at that. The bath water is bright red and yellow, and that's because it's warm. In some places, the water is even white, and that's where it's very hot. But can you see? The mountains of bubbles are blue. And that's because the bubbles are cooler than the water. You know what else is blue? <laughs> Our little rubber duck friends. Look at the blue duck swimming around in the swirly red water. Let's turn on the cold water and see what happens. Whoa! It's really dark blue. The water must be freezing. Now let's see what happens when we turn the hot water on instead. Did you see the colour change as it went from cold water to hot water? The hot water is red and white, which means it's hot. And that's because the cold water has come from the reservoir, through the pipes under the roads and into your house. It's then gone to the boiler where it's been heated up and kept warm in the cylinder tank, ready to go in the bath when I turn on the hot tap. Excellent. What was your favourite bit about finding out how hot water works? Do you remember what you call a lake that stores rainwater for us to use in our homes? Yes, it's a reservoir. Did you hear the sound the water made when I swished it in the bath? And did you see how the thermal camera made hot things look red and cold things look blue? Now, after I have a bath, there is an important thing I have to do every night before I go to bed. Can you guess what it is? Yes, brush my teeth. And to make my teeth squeaky clean, I have to brush them with toothpaste. Ooh. My toothpaste is stripy. But do you know, how does toothpaste get its stripes? Let's go and find out. How is it made? Toothpaste. Your toothpaste is made in a big factory like this. This factory makes one million tubes of toothpaste every day. That's a lot of toothpaste. The toothpaste ingredients arrive at the factory in lorries like this one. It's called a tanker and it looks a bit like a tube of toothpaste, doesn't it? This tanker is full of something called silica that looks like this, a white powder, and it gets pushed through the tubes way up into the factory. Over to you! silica, there are other ingredients to be used. And they have quite complicated names like xanthan gum or trisodium citrate dihydrate. Try saying that quickly. The first thing is they're all taken to a giant mixer. <laughs> and this is it. All of the ingredients are mixed together in this giant tank to make a paste that we call toothpaste. But it's not quite ready yet. Can you remember what my favourite type of toothpaste was? Yes, it's stripy toothpaste. So do you know how toothpaste gets its stripes? Well, for the stripes, we need to add colour. Red and blue. But you only need to add a very little bit. Can you believe that this much blue dye would be enough for 50 thousand tubes of toothpaste. That's enough toothpaste for a tube for every single person in a packed out football stadium. <laughs> wow. 
The toothpaste travels from the mixture all the way along these pipes into these big silver pots where some of the toothpaste gets its colour. We have red and blue and look you can even see some of the red and blue dye around the machine. Once the colour has been added all the toothpaste gets pushed through these pipes that go down into the floor. Where do you think it goes next? It comes through the ceiling to the floor below, through these pipes. One pipe is carrying red toothpaste, the other blue toothpaste, and the last one, white toothpaste. The toothpaste is checked to make sure it's properly mixed, so some of it is brought here to be tested. <laughs> Look at all this gloopy toothpaste. Have you ever seen so much in one place? Looks a bit like ice cream. But what about our stripy toothpaste? Look at all these empty tubes. They travel through this machine where they get flipped upside down, ready to be filled with our stripy toothpaste. This super fast machine is putting the toothpaste inside the tubes. Inside these pipes, the three colours of toothpaste, white, red and blue, are being pushed into the tubes. Can you see the stripes? This is one of the pipes that fill the toothpaste tubes inside the machine. And look, you can see how the toothpaste is squeezed through these four holes to make this pretty pattern. It's a bit like a star, isn't it? It all happens very fast, doesn't it? I think this is time for one of my special cameras. This camera films things in slow motion, which means we can see things that are really quick, like this machine slowed right down. Are you ready? Let's go. Watch how our three colours of toothpaste are getting pushed into the tubes at the same time to make perfect stripes. Now, a stopper is put in the bottom of the tube so the toothpaste doesn't fall out. This grabbing arm flips the tubes the right way up and they're ready to go off and be wrapped and packaged. The tubes move along here and it looks a bit like a model railway, doesn't it? Can you hear the sound of the machine? It's got quite a good beat. Now, the tubes of toothpaste go to a robot that wraps a label around each one, puts them inside boxes, and then they're ready to go to the shops. What was your favourite bit about the toothpaste making factory? remember what my favourite kind of toothpaste is. That's right, it's stripy. Did you hear the sound of the machinery as it flipped the toothpaste tubes? <gasps> it had a really good beat. Did you dance too? And did you see the way the toothpaste was put inside the tubes? That machine was so fast, we had to use my special camera to see it in slow motion. So now you know how toothpaste is made and how hot water comes out of the taps. I think it's time I brushed my teeth and had a bath. See you next time. There are lots of things all around us, exciting things. Maddie, 
and today I'm having a fun day out. I'm at a water park. Have you been to a water park? I love them. Playing in the different pools, splashing around, getting wet. Remember, you must never play near water without an adult. Slides are my favourite. But I love really big slides like those ones. Do you know how a water slide works? Can you see all that water coming down the slide? The water helps to move you down and it also makes you go faster and stops you getting stuck. But where does all that water come from and where does it go? Let's find out. How does it work? A water slide. When you go on a water slide, the first thing you need to do is climb to the top. Now this is the top of the slide. And can you see there's lots of water running down it? This is what's going to help me slide down. First, I need to sit down like this. All I need to do is push off. But first, I'm going to put my special camera on my head so you can see exactly what it looks like as I go down the slide. Are you ready? The water is going really fast and taking me with it. My special camera is waterproof. <laughs> that was so much fun. Did you see how the water was carrying me down the slide? The water is always flowing downwards and when you go on a slide, you go down too. And that's because of something called gravity. Gravity is what makes things fall to the ground. It's what keeps us and everything around us firmly on the ground instead of floating around in the air. Things like this ball. What do you think will happen when I let go of this ball? Will it go up or will it go down? What do you think? Let's go. The ball fell down and that's because of gravity. But if gravity pulls things down, how does the water get to the top of the slide? To find out, I need to get dry. Come with me, I've got something exciting to show you. Right now, we are underneath the swimming pool. Not very many people get to come down here. It's called the pump room and it's full of pipes and machines called pumps. A pump is a machine that moves liquids like water from one place to another through pipes like these all around me. These pumps are working all the time to pump water to all those slides around the park. And this is how a water pump works. Underneath the pool is a tank called the sump. The water is sucked up from the sump and into a big pipe. It's a bit like sucking a drink with a straw. The water travels along the pipe to a big spinning wheel. The wheel spins the water around very fast and pushes it up another pipe. The water is pushed up and up until it reaches the top of the slide. Now, gravity makes it fall down the slide and when it gets to the end, it whooshes into the swimming pool. At the side of the swimming pool is a hole called an inlet. Some of the water goes into the hole so that the pool doesn't overflow. It's a bit like the hole on the side of your bathtub. This water goes through a filter which cleans it and then along the last pipe into the sump where it's ready to be used again. How interesting is that? So this pipe here is the one that sucks the water up from the sump which is just behind this wall and inside this blue bit of machinery is the spinning wheel which whizzes the water around really fast and pushes it up to the top of the water slide. It looks a bit like a blue snail, doesn't it? Let's see what happens when Mike turns the pump on. Ooh, listen to the sound of the pump. Wait a minute, there's another stage. 
That's the sound of the spinning wheel whizzing round and round and all that water being pushed up to the top of the slide. Can you hear? Being underneath the swimming pool was so exciting. I loved seeing all of that water rushing out of the slide too. What was your favourite bit? Do you remember the name of the machine that sends water around the water park? That's right. It's the pump. Did you hear the sound the big spinning wheel inside the pump made? And did you see how the water flowed down the slide when I was on it? <laughs> so the next time you go on a water slide, you'll know just how it works. There are lots of different places you can go to on a fun day out, but there's always one thing I like to have as a special treat. Do you know what it is? It's ice cream. Hello. Hiya. Can I have a strawberry ice cream with sprinkles, please? Of course you can. Thanks. Oh. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, a treat. What's your favourite ice cream? Mine is strawberry. But do you know what this bit's called? This is the ice cream cone, and it's a really clever shape because it holds the ice cream whilst you're eating it, and then you can eat the cone afterwards. <laughs> but do you know how an ice cream cone is made? Let's find out. How is it made? Ice cream cone. An ice cream cone gets made here in a huge ice cream cone factory. The ingredients that make up the ice cream cones have to be carefully weighed. This big machine is called a mixer. Ice cold water and sugar are put inside and mixed together <laughs> until the sugar completely dissolves. Oh, it smells so sweet. It smells a bit like popcorn. Now the other ingredients are being added, and the main ones are vegetable oil, which your family might use to cook with at home, and flour, just like you used to make a cake. But flour can get a little bit messy. In it goes. Ooh, there's flour absolutely everywhere. Next, it's time for the vegetable oil. Here it comes. Whoa! Listen to that sound. It's churning and gurgling like the inside of a volcano. In the middle of the mixer, there's a metal arm that's spinning round and round. Let's get a closer look with my special camera. The mixer is getting lovely and smooth. And the metal arm makes sure that it's light and has lots of air in it. When the mixing is finished, it's poured into another container. <laughs> the finished mixture is called batter, and it's just like the batter you use to make pancakes. Look at the way it's just splatting into this big tank. And now we're off to the cone-making machine. A tank of batter has been hooked up to the machine and we're ready to go. The batter is pushed along this blue pipe and into this metal moving arm. And at the end is a nozzle, which squirts out five blobs of batter onto this hot moving plate. The five blobs of batter look a little bit like a flower at the beginning. The moving hot plate is really special because it's got lots of little squares cut into it. And that's what gives the ice cream cones that crisscross pattern. And it's called a waffle pattern. Now, 
Watch how a lid closes down on each blob of batter and squashes it into a pancake shape. It's ready to be cooked. And that happens in here. The moving plate loops around this hot oven, giving each circle of batter a quick bake. And here are the cooked circles. They look like pancakes, don't they? At the moment, the pancakes are still warm, so they're bendy. But the moment they start to cool down, they start to go hard. So this machine has to twist them into their cone shape really quickly. Otherwise, they'll cool down and it will be too late. The pancakes are twisted into shape and they pop out of a chute at the end of the machine. Now the cones are being pushed onto this conveyor belt so they can cool down and eventually be put into packets at the other end. And here is a finished ice cream cone. It looks great, doesn't it? And look, you can even see that lovely waffle pattern. All that's missing is some ice cream. Some of the cones are made extra special by decorating them. There are lots of different types of ice cream cones. Some are dipped in chocolate and covered in sherbet. Some are covered in sprinkles. And now they're ready to eat for a special treat. Yummy. What was your favourite bit about seeing how ice cream cones are made? Can you remember the name of the mixture used to make ice cream cones? Yes, it's called batter. Did you hear the sound the mixer made? And did you see the batter being squirted onto the hot plate? So the next time you go to a water park and you have a go on a water slide, you'll know how it works. And if you get to have an ice cream as a special treat afterwards, then you'll know how the cone was made and how it gets that lovely waffle pattern. This is very yummy and I'll see you next time.